So why would someone want to live this way or build a house by themselves like this? Live a simple life? I get asked this question a lot. A lot of you watching this might be dreaming about living like this or homesteading or wondering what it's like and if you should do it or not. That was me a while ago. I wondered the same thing. Financial freedom is one big draw for most. Imagine not having a mortgage or utility bills, not locked into 30 years of payments. Or how about not relying on a city or a grid or an energy company or a bank? You can be self-sufficient and not really concerned with outside situations because it won't phase your way of life. If something happens, you just keep on chugging along. This way of life is pretty much stress-free. It's peaceful, it's at a slower pace, it's actually, it's at the pace you choose. What about health benefits? Well, if you collect and grow most of your own food and water, you can pretty much be sure that it's mostly free of toxins, if, if not zero toxins. The lifestyle also keeps you active, which is always good for you. It's been said, a body in motion stays in motion. I enjoy being outside, Working with my hands, working the land, harvesting food, firewood, hiking, fishing, playing with my kids, building, playing with my dog, you name it. Don't not do this type of life just because you don't know anyone else doing it right now. Or because your family and friends are trying to talk you out of it, saying stuff like, you'll miss this once you give it up. It's not true. It's not like you're going to live somewhere in the abyss where modern amenities aren't even available anymore. As a homesteader, you can still have both, but now you have control. They, on the other hand, they're enslaved by the modern world. They don't have any control of anything. Ask them to turn all the power off for three days. They're not allowed to go to the grocery store or use a phone or a computer for three days. They'll find out real quick how much the modern world has them in the palm of its hand, ready to squeeze life out of them any moment it chooses. Don't be afraid to take this step because you think you don't know how to do it the right way. There is no right or wrong way. Just start and learn as you go. Any way is better than not doing it at all. That's how I started. I really didn't know anything. I just know I needed to get away from the way I was living. I've never built a house like this before in my life. Look at the world today. I mean, really sit back and look at it. I'm approaching 50 years old, and I've never seen the world so in your face wicked as it is now. Who in their right mind wouldn't want to distance themselves from it? Do what you want to do. Do what you feel is right for you and your family. There are many, many, many rewards awaiting you, above and beyond the obvious ones. Before I continue this video, I just want to extend a huge thank you to all of you who've stuck around till now. Your support is greatly appreciated in every moment you spend watching. It means a lot to me and the growth of this channel. And I'd like to take a moment to give a special shout out to today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by Aura, a software that helps safeguard your digital identity and keeps you protected online. Have you ever Googled yourself and been surprised to find your personal information plastered across public listing sites? It's a concerning reality, right? Recently, I was a victim of identity theft and it took me more than a year to get my credit and finances straightened back out. It was an absolute nightmare. I'm thankful that Aura is here to tackle these issues now. They identify data brokers exposing your information and submit opt-out requests on your behalf. These brokers are required by law to remove your info upon request, but it's often a hassle. Aura simplifies this process for you. But it's not just about data brokers. Aura goes beyond shielding you from online threats that lurk in the digital shadows. The best part? It's all inclusive, from parental controls to antivirus, VPN, password management, identity theft insurance, and more. Aura covers it all in one affordable package. As you can see from this price comparison, Aura offers comprehensive protection at an unbeatable value. Let Aura handle the heavy lifting of keeping you safe online while you focus on other tasks with peace of mind. If you're ready to take control of your online security, head over to Aura, A-U-R-A, 
youtube.com slash Dave Mead to start your two-week free trial. The link is also provided in the video description below. It's crucial to safeguard your digital identity. Thanks to Aura, you can navigate the online world with confidence. A big shout out and thank you to Aura for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to the video. So why did I choose to build this house? Why did I choose to live a simple life, having a homestead, homeschooling our kids? You know, this isn't the life that I knew growing up. It was the opposite, pretty much. Nobody in my extended family ever lived like this, as far as I know. Before this, I lived in New York City. I was a vice president of a large company. I made a lot of money, the most I've ever made to date. Lots of people looked up to me, respected me. I could go and do just about anything I wanted. Yet, I felt trapped in something pure evil. Like it wasn't supposed to be what I was doing with my life. It was consuming me. After years of doing that, I didn't want any part of it anymore. I had just met the woman I knew I was going to marry and starting a family had crossed my mind, and the life I was living was surely not the right environment to raise kids. So something had to change. Now the career I had was nothing illegal, but the environment, the people, the hours, the lack of morals, the lack of good human character in the people around me, were making me feel less like a human being, less like the man that I wanted to be. Something inside me screamed, get away from this life, it cannot serve you. So, I walked away from it all. I moved out of New York to a piece of land in the hills of Appalachia, away from society, close to nature. I sacrificed a high paying job, the nightlife, concerts, good food, parties, friends and family that were close by. I moved to another state where I knew nobody. I had no job, no friends to help me out. I didn't even really have a well laid out plan. But what I did have for the first time was peace. I had inspiration and motivation for my new beginning. I didn't miss anything I gave up. I was lost in a new life that I chose to get lost in while seeking truth. Truth to the question, why did I do this? What am I searching for? Why couldn't I have been happy with the life I was living? Did I do the right thing? A lot of people have traded my old life with me in a heartbeat. Why did I do this, really? You know, this is normal to have these types of doubts. I'm sure some of you are thinking or have thought the same thing. You know why? It's because the world has us so hardwired to believe we need it and everything it has to offer or we just can't make it. Well, I'm sorry, that's not true. So fast forward a couple years now into my new life. I'm married to the best woman I could ever ask for. I feel I do not deserve her in any way and I'm so grateful for every day I wake up to her. We have a dog named Hercules. We live in a forest on a hill in a tiny two bedroom single wide trailer. We have no money, we have each other. And we're learning how to live off the land, collecting wild edibles, growing a garden, hunting, fishing, constantly trying to learn. I joined a local volunteer fire department to help out the community the only way I knew how. And along the way, of course, I learned real life saving skills. I became a certified firefighter, graduated the fire academy, the whole nine yards. This was a blessing because years down the road, on two separate occasions, I saved my wife's life and my daughter's life. Maybe I'll talk more about that later. Work, so I found work a good drive away as a construction laborer which was some of the most brutal work I've ever done. One time, I remember it was about Christmas and it was like 15 or 20 degrees out. It was so cold that, you know, you just, you can't get your hands warm enough in the gloves that you're wearing. I had to run a jackhammer, like it was 90 to 100 pound jackhammer for eight hours straight. They made a mistake with a pillar or something and, and I had to, I was the lowest man on the totem pole. I was the lowest paid guy. And instead of hiring a backhoe operator for 10 bucks an hour, they paid me 80 bucks for the day to run the jackhammer. I remember driving home that night wondering how am I going to make it home. It was like an hour and a half drive and I could barely close my hands around the steering wheel.
that job was temporary. When the project was done, so was my job. But luckily after that, I was able to land a job as an auto mechanic. And this is something that I have skill set in. I actually went to school for it. Fast forward a little more now. We have one kid, my son Samson, and one more on the way. And I'm building the first structure of my life. This small 16 by 16 log cabin, I built it right into the side of the single wide trailer we were living in. The design is very similar in the um, building method of these new large log homes. I built that like 11 years ago and it's still just as strong as ever. We love that place. All eight of us, believe it or not, lived in there for a while. So I worked as a mechanic for years and along the way somewhere I, I was hunting and I decided to make bows and arrows for hunting from the wood around me, from my surroundings. And my wife, being the smarter one, said, hey, why don't you start selling some of these? Seeing that I had about 30 of them laying around, I thought, you know, that sounds like a good idea. So I made some business cards. My wife made me a website, created a YouTube channel called Mead Longbows, which is still active today. And it slowly started to sell a few here and there, which was pretty cool. And all of a sudden I found myself with another motivator to live the way I'm living. Another life skill that was proving useful. I was still working as a mechanic. I was a lieutenant now at the fire department, the volunteer department. And I would make bows on the side, kind of like at night or on the weekends. You know, after I put the kids to sleep and I would just kind of catch up on some orders or make some that were for sale or for an upcoming show which the shows were sometimes local, sometimes I'd drive to the next state over and I would take what I had and I'd sell them and I'd sell out. So that was a good, you know, it was like a promising indicator that maybe I'm doing something good. So I was finally getting into a groove of being a, working two jobs, being a bow maker and a mechanic, a firefighter, a father, a husband and it was it was kind of working for a while there but unfortunately I started to develop some back issues and sleeping issues followed after that like led to actual insomnia and it was tough I struggled for a while with it it lasted years uh, the first couple of years I tried to naturally figure out how to sleep without taking anything um, but it, it turned into full-blown insomnia my back pain got worse it became debilitating it became like the most crucial thing in my life and it started to pull me away from being the provider, the father, the husband that I was trying to be. It started to deteriorate that. And you know, life is difficult at times. Um, there's suffering and sacrifice. You have to accept this. It's not just about me. So I couldn't just give up on everything and take care of me completely, right? I had to, of course, get myself to a place where I could function. And that was my main goal because it's about my wife and kids and doing what's right, putting them first. You know, suffering doesn't last forever, right? It humbles you. Um, it kind of, if there's anything left, the way I look at it at least, if there's anything left of my ego, um, self-serving characteristics, you know, it kind of just destroys that. And once it's through, the blessing is on the other side. At least that's what I found. And I'll talk about that more later in the video. I'll touch back on this subject again. But I wanted to leave my house for the benefit of my wife and children, no matter how costly it was to me, mentally or physically. I realized this when I was working these two jobs. And, you know, being a mechanic from 8 to 6, Monday through Friday, working a half day on Saturdays, then come home, eat dinner with the family, put the kids to bed, and then work, at some boat, work on some boat orders at night. Keep up with something that, you know, maybe this business was going to turn into something. At this time, I wasn't able to sleep through the night. My back pain was becoming so bad, I could not sit down for more than a few minutes. Sometimes my legs would give out, lose control, and I would just fall. I'm 39 now, I think, about that time, when this started happening. 
working those two jobs, burning the candle at both ends, on my feet all day as a mechanic, coming home working on bows, while not sleeping at night, my back going into spasms when I laid there trying to sleep. The doctor said I needed spine surgery. I wasn't quite ready to accept that. I believe that there had to be another way I could get through this. I remember driving to work one day thinking, how did this happen? Is this it? Is this my life? Then all of a sudden this overwhelming feeling came over me, a feeling of gratitude, which was very weird. You know, it seemed like I was complaining about my life, and a feeling of gratitude came over me like a freight train. Immediately I thought of my wife, my kids. I have a home, we have food, I have a job, I have two jobs. Right then I began to out loud give thanks to something bigger than me, a higher power if you will. I guess you could say I was praying for the first time in my life. I thanked God for everything I had in my life and begged him to give me the strength to keep on going to do whatever I needed to provide for them and keep them safe, no, ma no matter what it meant for me or what I had to go through. I said the same type of prayer, the same bunch of words every morning and every night on the drive to and from work for about a year. And during this time is when things began to happen for me. I wasn't a man of faith. I did not at the time understand any of it. It seemed so foreign to me. I guess, really at the time, I felt like I didn't need to know all about it. I just knew something was changing in me and in my life for the better. My bow business was picking up so much that I was able to quit the full-time job as a mechanic and go full-time bow making. And since we homeschool our kids, that now meant I could be at home with my wife and kids all the time, like I originally planned from the beginning when I left New York City for this life. So fast forward now a few more years and I'm getting my health back. Like I'm, I'm really active again. My back pain is probably 95% gone. And it's, you know, it has to do with my lifestyle, my happiness, uh, my ability to, to sleep and get up and do things that I should be doing like a normal person that feels like a normal human being, not on medication anymore, by the way. So this is something that was huge because a benzodiazepine, which is what I was taking, it was called temazepam, and that's something that, you know, I didn't share with a lot of people in my life, but I'm, I'm telling you because there might be someone out there right now that's, that's on a medication like this, or even an antidepressant or something that they're taking to help them cope, you know, and get through. Um, this, this, this medication... I thought it had me as a prisoner. You know, I thought, you know, I thought I was free and then I got back into a situation where I couldn't sleep and this is where after years of fighting I, I gave in and I had to take a medication where I didn't want to but I, I was on this medication for almost eight years and it's supposed to be short term. The doctors were like literally, I don't know if you can get off of it without tapering onto something else because it's that addicting, it's that, it becomes that part of you, you need it. Nice. And, and I believed them because there was a couple of times where I didn't take my medication and I had major problems. Like I had um, migraines so bad that I was vomiting, I couldn't function, I couldn't see straight. It was, it was debilitating, debilitating. And I was, they called that, they said that was withdrawals. And that's just from take, not taking it in one night. I thought I was gonna be on this stuff forever. And, you know, I, I tried multiple times over those years to just kind of come off of it, and, uh, but in a safer way. So I tried to like half the dose and that didn't work. I tried to take another medication and end half the dose and that worked for like a little while and then it kind of just petered off and I had to go back to the full dose again and it was just years of just taking this medication. I thought this is going to be part of me forever. And I kind of just 
accepted it, but, uh, you know, it was always a, a just something that I didn't want to have to be relying on. And I didn't know what it was doing to me as far as my everyday life, if it was kind of altering my behavior or my memory or who knows. And so recently, this is all within this last several months, um, which has been a year now. So since I've been a regenerate you know, Christian, a born-again Christian, there has been so many things that have happened to me, but I'm not even going to share those with you all right now. Okay, my life has definitely been an eye-opener as far as the path that I chose and why and all the great things that have happened just by sticking to it no matter how hard it got. But I will tell you that recently there is something that I witnessed that I prayed about and it happened and this was for somebody else and then because of that my faith just exploded and that night I didn't take my medication and I didn't even think about it because it was an emergency we're at the emergency room and I didn't take the, it wasn't for me but we didn't take the medic I didn't take the medication because I needed to stay up I needed to stay up for that person and I might tell this story in the future and I realized the next day that nothing happened to me now I didn't sleep but I didn't have withdrawal symptoms I didn't have my I didn't have a headache at all I didn't have anything I was just tired so then that night I prayed and I asked Jesus if I could get off this medication. I know he can do it. If he wills it, please remove the, uh, the, the necessity of me having to take this medication from my life so that I don't have to be reliant on it anymore and I can be a good father and a good husband without the use of drugs. And I didn't take it that night and I slept. And that was the first night I slept unmedicated for probably 10 years. And that was over two months ago. I'm still sleeping every night with nothing. Now, there's some people out there that are going to hear that and they're going to think, big deal. Everyone misses sleep here and there. Everyone has to take, you know, whatever. They're going to they're play it off. But I know there's some of you out there listening that are taking something and are thinking to themselves the same situation, probably relating to the same stuff that I was saying, that you're going to be on this medication for the rest of your life because there is no alternative. Well, guess what? There is. I'm telling you, there is. I still can't believe it. You know, I'll go a week and then I'll just, I'll think about it. I'll be like, man, I don't have to take anything anymore. I haven't even told my doctor yet. I just stopped filling the prescription and, um, you know, I'm, I can't wait to go see my doctor and, and tell, and just tell the story. Um, but I haven't had a chance to go in yet. And so I'm sharing this with you. I don't know how many of you are all watching this, but I hope there's some of you out there listening right now that this can, re can relate to any of this story. And my hope is that it turns you either to God for the first time or back to God. Because now I was on the right path and my belief, I, something was growing inside of me. But then once, once it clicked, once my belief went locked in and I started reading the Word of God and I got baptized and born again and my faith just was, I was all about it, you know, which I still am. It's, it's all day, every day. I'm, I'm in, I live in it before I go to sleep, sometimes while I'm sleeping, and when I'm awake, it's always on my mind, because that's what you're supposed to do. You put God first. And you start to renew your mind by being in the Word of God. And what that does is it helps you know what the will of God is and 
and then you can start living these things out. It might sound simple, it might sound difficult, I don't know how it sounds here right now, but it will make sense once you are there. It will make sense. I remember reading the Bible for the first time with my, I have opened the Bible in the past and I have looked at it and I have thought to myself, this is, I can understand this. And I remember just closing the book or thinking it was just, this is crazy. This is gibberish. I'm not reading this. But when I opened it probably a year ago and I started reading, everything was jumping out at me and it made sense and it aligned perfectly with my beliefs as far as a husband and a father raising kids, how to live life. It was incredible. I realized right at that moment I was humbled. It jumped out at me that this is why I want to be like this. This is how this was put, God put this in my heart. This isn't something I came up with. This is the reason I want to be like this. This is the reason I want to live like this. Because it was already written. It's already written in our souls. We spend most of our life listening to the world, following the world, and getting pulled away from God's word. Pulled away from the life that we're supposed to be living. Temptations and desires and of the flesh are just constantly pulling you away from the actual life you're supposed to be living, which is going to give you actual peace and happiness. Get, get into God's word. Get recentered again and then go about your life. I guarantee you things will change for the better. You can't be any good to the world if you're just like the world. The only way you can make a difference in the world is if you become different from the world. The only way you can make a difference in your situation is if you become different than your situation. You know, what I found out and what I believe strongly is that, you know, and this is goes for anyone out there, but if, if you're a father and you have children looking up to you and you're thinking, or you're thinking about having children, um, you know, this is the best time to do it, to change your ways right now for the better so that you can be that inspiration. Um, you can be that motivator, that someone that they'll look up to and admire and want to follow in their footsteps this way you'll be able to do God's will and your children will want to follow in your footsteps. You know, I'm a true believer that if you are choosing the right things, if you're making the right decisions, if you're not trying to always be of the world and give in to every temptation, if you're trying to do what's right in almost every situation that you can, that you have power over, of course, and you're trying to do what's right for the better of humanity or the better of your parents or the better of your loved ones, your children, your wife, then God's going to put some things there in front of you. If you're not a believer, that is, okay, like I wasn't in the beginning, you know, I didn't think I needed anything. I felt I knew right from wrong and I didn't need, I didn't need God at the time. I didn't need to know about it or anything like that. And, um, you know, I was just, uh, I had an ego, right? And I was, I wasn't humbled. I had an ego, but I was also, I was making the right decisions for the most part. I wasn't um, acting out on temptations. I was making the right decisions to kind of do something different from everybody else just because it actually seemed more human-like. It seemed more morally correct for my future children and for myself, my own sanity, my wife's, the, my future children, etc. I think you get it. So if you're doing this, if you take that first step, right? It's a leap of faith. You don't know what you're about to do. It's faith, right? Faith is really believing in something that you don't completely understand. So if you do that, and then you continue to do that, but use your guiding light, beacon of light, as what is right, doing what is right, then God will give you little hints, little pieces of maybe maybe open some doors for you, maybe 
have something cross your path that is exactly what you need to stay on that path? You know, I don't know. Everyone's different. But then when you finally come to God, when you finally actually realize that this is God, this is God's will, this is God's path, that you're doing God's work, that you're actually living out God's will for you, for the better of you and your life, that he has seen fit for you to live, then once you accept him and Jesus Christ as your savior and you become a born again Christian, truthfully, and you have that 100% faith, remember, belief in something you, you can't possibly completely understand because God's knowledge is so much more so different and, and over, overflowing than ours. We're just human beings. But when you have that faith in him and that this is he brought you here and you give thanks and every day you do that you become a new creature you become different there's a change that then continues to happen but it's much stronger it's much more apparent the things in your life everything your children your wife your the people you meet the things that are happening now it just changes exponentially that's when you start to realize that now you're not just living for yourself it really hits you that you have you've been in service to others this whole time on this path and now what you know and what you're a part of now is so much bigger than you and you want to share it with others because you don't want to be enjoying this type of peace alone you want others to understand this and that's a beautiful thing. That's God's plan. And it may sound foreign to you right now, because I will tell you years ago, if you said this to me, I would have looked you in the face. I would have been like, oh, that's nice. I would have walked away from you, and I would have forgot five minutes later everything you said, because it wouldn't have mattered, because I wasn't ready to hear it. So some of you might be listening, and you're not ready to hear this, and it might be gibberish. You might have clicked off by now. <laughs> but... Some of you that are listening still, and if this is clicking at all, that means this is for you. This is for you. You need to take the next step. This is, this is another message. This is one of those things that God's given you. This is one of those hints or opportunities that God is giving you. Do something with it. Please. So... The, the, the more you turn to God and you separate yourself from the darkness of the world, the evil out there, the temptations, you know, the more you stand against it, the more God will manifest in your life. The more anointing, manifestation, and power you will feel every day in your life, in everything you do, and everyone you speak to. the more your life will be blessed in every way you could possibly imagine. I don't know how to say it any better, but if any of you need any help out there, guidance, or any questions for me, please feel free to contact me. Leave them in the comment section below. I read every comment. And please, if you've had experiences like this, or you agree with me, or you align with what I'm saying, leave your experience in the comment section below. I'd love to hear it. I read every comment. Well, why did I choose this life? I believe God was my beacon of light when faced with the world's evil and darkness. And I followed him here. May God bless you all. Thanks for watching. Peace be with you.